So this is the sub order review for the Nash Glide 14 foot in the GTW construction. They also make this board in the GS construction as well. And they make this board in a few other sizes as well. They make an 11.6, a 12 foot, a 12.6, and this one, obviously the 14. The full specifications for this, the 14 foot, it's 29 and a half inches wide. It's 6.75 inches thick. Then the volume comes in at 290 liters. It comes as standard with a single US box fin. It weighs 14.2 kilograms and it retails at 1,849 pounds or $2,379. So Nash have designed this board as a touring, fast cruising, really easy to use board that can get you going places. The materials of the board, you've got an EPS foam core in here, then you've got a glass matrix wrapping around the whole of the board. You've got a few other layers of glass in there and then you're finishing off with the bamboo veneer which you can see on the top of the board, which does make it look outstanding. So let's move on to our sub border impressions of the board. So first off, let's keep on the look of the board because it definitely is one of the most eye-catching boards in the Nash range. The way the bamboo is finished with the pinstripe black line down the center and the black pinstripe lines around the nose of the board really do set it off. Up at the front, you can see your bungee strap tie down points. You can get in there nice and big so you can get some big bungees in and they're relatively wide apart as well. So you get a large amount of weight on there. Moving back, then you've got the recessed deck where the deck comes in really grippy diamond gripped EVA pad goes to blue to dark blue towards the tail. And as you move back on the board, you can really see that large concave, which is throughout the whole of the deck. So it really just lowers your center of effort, makes it easy to paddle, gives you a bit more stability when you're paddling it. And at the back of the board there, you've got your pressure valve and your leaching point, and you can also see a lot more of the bamboo deck. Obviously it's gonna have Nash's massive, deep, really comfy recessed carry handle. So it's nice and easy, easy to carry. And actually for the weight, 14.2 kilos, it's not actually as heavy, especially not as heavy as some other touring base boards, which we're gonna talk about later on. Other things to talk about up at the front there on the nose, you've got your classic wave piercing nose that Nash have developed and a nicely convex deck at the top there so the water just sheds off any water that comes over the front of the board it's one of those classic noses that's very mesmerizing to watch water wraps around it and it quite easily displaces down the sides so looking at the outline shape of the board you can see it's got that race pedigree it's come from the racing background but it's a little bit stretched being 29 and a half wide so there it gives you way more stability back towards the tail. So if you are loading it up or you're doing step back turns, it offers you a lot more stability because of that. And a little bit more width up at the nose there, again, so you can put more weight up at the front section. So looking at the bottom shape of the board, you've got a very subtle transition from your wave piercing nose up at the front there to a very, very slight concave just here, which channels the water and forces it back. But as soon as you get near the midsection, the board is pretty much flat. Maybe there's a tiny bit of concave in the middle. Remember, that's where the board is sort of scooping out in the middle there. But then as you move back towards the thin of the board, this concave gets a bit more pronounced and really pronounced right at the back of the board. Having that concave at the back of the board there just helps for the stability, makes the board a little bit more planted, especially when you're doing your step back turns and your maneuvers when you're standing at the back of the board. And also it helps direct the water towards the fin, making it a bit quicker to paddle. Looking at the rail shape of the board, you've got a soft rail up at the front there, moving back to a sharper rail right towards the tail. The sharp rails really help the board paddle fast and they release the water really easy. The soft rails at the front really make the board much easier to handle in chop or bumps or if you're going downwinding. Finishing off with the US box fin, a really nice Maui fin company fin, really nicely swept back, not gonna catch any seaweed on that fin. And also where they've placed the US box in the back of the board, it's nice and far back, so it's very easy to paddle in a straight line. So moving on to what it paddles like on the water. So I've sort of said a few things already when I've been talking about the design, but the biggest thing you notice when you jump on this board for the first time is how easy this board paddles. How easy it paddles in a straight line, how much glide it has when you're paddling in a straight line and actually how stable the board is. It's 29 and a half, so it's a nice width. It's not too wide. It's not up there with the 30, 31, 32s. It's a little bit narrower, so it's a nice quick board to paddle. But I think having this nice sunk down deck and actually having this nice curve here, you can get your feet right against the edges of the board and it gives you a very stable paddling position. 
Being a bit wider up at the nose there gives the ball extra stability, but really it's really noticeable at the tail if you're doing your step back turns or you're getting into that sort of stuff. This board is incredibly stable and I think it's to do with the nice hollowed out deck so it gives you that lower sound of effort to stand on and it being have a nice concave underneath the board as well it makes the board feel very planted. Maybe also to do with the MFC fin at the back which is nicely swept back, gives you that extra bit of stability. So for your maneuvers like your step back turns, this is a very easy board to use. So moving on to who do we think this will be best suited for, let's talk about ability, weight range, and what you're gonna be doing with it, because this is gonna get quite interesting now. Ability, well, you could be a complete beginner on this. If you're a beginner, you probably know more than 90 kilos maybe if you got on this, but it's a very easy board to paddle, like I've just said, and again, for the glide and the straight line tracking, super, super easy. And for paddler weight, well, you're definitely going to be able to paddle this board up to about 105 kilos, and you're probably going to be able to put 20 kilos of baggage on there as well, because there is a lot of volume to this board. As for what it's best used for, this is where it gets a little bit interesting, because this board is more than just a touring board. This board could be a very good entry-level race board for somebody, especially if you are more of the 95 kilograms. Good amount of stability, good glide, good directional stability and it's still relatively quick. And again, if you were getting into like step back turns or you're doing more racing or you have to do more boy turns, this sort of board is gonna really lend itself to getting you to perform better. You're gonna be able to go fast cruising on this. You're gonna be able to paddle longer distances with your friends. You might even be able to put a dog on the front. And yes, of course, you're gonna be able to take it touring. It's got a lot of area to put stuff. But I think the way that the board is set up now, straight out of the box, it's gonna really suit the racers and maybe people getting into downwinding, which you know we all are loving at the moment. This board is going to really take you downwinding those river downwinds those open water downwinding it's going to be nice and stable at the back of the tail and you've got a nice big open deck to walk around and get used to walking on the board and to finish off with pros and cons and value for money the pros the board shape and the size and the dimensions of this board really will suit a lot of different people but bringing in the cons, you've got to look at from the touring point of view, it's not a full on touring board. For a start, it doesn't come with front bungees. Why not? Be great to have those because the holes and the eyelets are put there. It would be amazing if it had rear bungee eyelet holes here at the back of the board. Then we're going to be looking at a real touring board that we're going to be able to take places. So it's like a beginner entry level to touring, but it's not a full on touring board. So that is a negative for us. And value for money, well, £1,849 or $2,379. It's a lot of dosh. It's not the most expensive board in the market. I can think of some rivals that start with S that are a little bit more pricey than this, but they do come with all of the bungees. And there are some slightly cheaper base boards as well. It's a good brand Nash and it's a stunning looking board. Bamboo veneer on the deck looks beautiful and I hope that comes across in camera. So it is value, it's up there, it's not too expensive and it's what you'd sort of expect for the brand quality you're getting. So if you're looking for a board that does it all and it's going to paddle easy, have a look at the Nash Glide in the 14 foot and this is the GTW. Remember they do this in a GS as well and that retails at £1,499. So I hope you found that SUP Border review interesting and informative. Remember to check out the SUP Border Pro version of this video if you want to find out more. We're going to be comparing it to the Starboard Touring, to the SIC Oakness, to the JP Allwater, and to the Fnatic Ray. So check out that on SUP Border Pro. But until next time, we'll see you on SUP Border or on YouTube. Thank you very much.